Hey, I'm making no progress on anything, but I really wanted to do a video. So I thought I'd randomly start searching for book tags and see what I came up with. And I found one that I think is pretty interesting to do. It's called the Classic, the Classics Book Tag. I'm sure there's many tags with that name. And the video I found it on was from 2019 by Eric Kane Anderson. And he was doing it. Um, he was not the original person to do it. It was originally done in, if I can see, I think about 2015. By It's a Books World. And I think this is a, I don't know if this is a thing that used to happen. It came from a blog or, or this, or this booktuber also had a blog or something. Anyway, that's what I've got uh, keyed up here. Maybe people know some more of the background of these kind of tags. I'm sure it's evolved over time. So there are the usual number of questions. There are nine questions, ten questions, all about classics. And the first one is the most negative, so if you can bear with me on this one, the others are, 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 are more positive. Question number one, an overhyped classic you really didn't like. Okay. Oh, look at that. Okay. Pride and Prejudice. Definitely didn't like it. I know that's kind of a cliche, especially for an old white man. But in my defense, Charlotte Bronte didn't like Jane Austen either. There's something about Jane Austen's books that really annoyed the hell of me. And, there, and I guess I liked Pride and Prejudice. Well, the one I like most of all is Northanger Abbey because it has a sense of humor a bit. And it's, you know, it's a parody of old Gothic novels in some sense. And she did this novella called Lady Susan, which I thought had a really good uh, plot. There was a movie based on a few years ago. The movie took the name of, of the movie calls itself Love and Friendship, based on the name of a different Jane Austen story, an incomplete novel that she had wrote when she was young. And that causes some confusion, but uh, Lady S Susan's a, a, a good story with an interesting middle-aged protagonist closer to middle-aged protagonist who goes through some machinations and more my kind of thing. And uh, Pride and Prejudice, I had watched one of the old series first, and and I'm not going to say that I didn't like it because it's just a love story about marriage and stuff, but I just found that these people's lives were kind of vapid. You know what I really don't like is that these people have servants, and Jane Austen does, does not treat the servants as characters at all. You know, in in the Brontes books, if there's a servant in the house, you know their name at least, something like that. Um, I, I feel like, and I'm sure P.G. Woodhouse loved Jane Austen. I think most people love Jane Austen. I'm probably probably wrong, but to me, Pride and Prejudice or Jane Austen's other novels, uh, Mansfield Park, which I, I guess I did finish that one. I tried to finish Emma, which seems more promising because I like that movie Clueless, which is a modern day updating of it, I believe, if I got the right movie right. But it seems like these are P.G. Woodhouse kind of characters with P.G. Woodhouse kind of problems, but without P.G. Woodhouse's awareness of how trivial it all is. These people seem to think they have real problems. And to me, it seems they seem very trivial. I don't want to talk about Pride and Prejudice anymore. I wish I picked another one. Um, but it is the, the most famous book that I really don't like, that I know a lot of people like. Favorite time period to read about? Well, lately, since I've read, uh, over the last few years, I've read a lot of Henry James and a lot of... I'm going to try and do pauses in this video so I can cough. A lot of Henry James and a lot of Edith Wharton, who are both fantastic. Both covered the same sort of uh, milieu and, and time period of Americans of a certain social class and, so, uh, and so, so, social ambition, often in Europe. 
and it's around, I don't know, do you call that the Belle Epoch? Epoch? Do you call it the Fin de Cicle or something? The 1880s, the 1905 or something like that. I do enjoy reading books in that time period. So if you can uh, recommend some other writers who do that, that same era, I'd be interested in those as well. That's my favorite time period to read about at, at the moment. And also, when you think of other uh, books I like about, um, like the adventure books we talked about, we've been talking about it on some of my friends' channels recently, you know, the the, uh, the George MacDonald Fraser book, the Flashman books, and the ones I didn't mention, which I can't believe I didn't mention in the other, uh, other video, was the Bernard Cornwell's uh, Sharp, Richard Sharp books, Sharp's Rifles, Sharp, the... Soldier in the in the area of the Napoleonic Wars. I guess that's my favorite period to read about. You know, you get taken to that time. I guess that's that's like the classic period, I suppose. You know, One Piece. You get no, no, anything when Napoleon was alive. Okay, over our class. Favorite time to read. Favorite fairy tale. I guess it's because. Just going to go with what came to mind, which was um, and now it's out of my mind, the Pied Piper of Hamlin, <clears throat> because this poor guy gets so screwed and he takes uh, horrible revenge, but he, you got to hand it to him because he did what he said he was going to do. He, there's this piper, he goes to this town, it's infested with rats. He tells the people of the town, I can get the rats, I can, I can play my pipe and I'll lead all the rats out into the mountains and run them off a cliff or something like this, and then you just pay me for the work. And they're like, okay, that sounds like a good deal, that's a fair deal, and he does it, and he gets rid of all the rats, and they go, well, we don't have rats now, we're not going to pay you, I don't see what, why we should have to pay just because we promised to, and hateful people, and so he takes a very excellent revenge, a very excellent idea of revenge, is he steals all their children, which is, you know, it's just the story, so it's not real children. It's, I've heard, read a couple of different versions, or remember a couple of different versions where, you know, it's, it's pretty happy for, for the children in one version I read, where they all live in the mountains, they dance, and they have fun and stuff, because they don't have to live with their asshole parents, and this, this horrible little town where they don't pay for their services and uh, you know another version where where the Pied Piper gets his comeuppance and he's punished back again which he's supposed to be punished because somehow this was an excessive revenge which I suppose it was and others where they just the, the villagers uh, repent and then the Pied Piper brings the kids back no harm done these, this coughing starts like late in the day and then it goes all night. What is the most embarrassed classic you haven't read yet? I think this means what is the the most classic you're embarrassed to not have read? What is the book, what is the classic work of literature that you're most embarrassed to not have read? And really nothing. I was going to say Remembrance, um, uh, In Search of Lost Time, Proust, also known as um, remembrance of things past. Um, I can't really say I'm embarrassed, though, because a lot of people haven't read that. I mean, seven volumes. I know a lot of people would like to read it. I do want to read it. I think I'm most embarrassed. Um, Bleak House, probably, because I've read a lot of... Dickens only wrote 14 novels. I mean, they are big novels, but... And I've read... Uh, a fair number of them, and I've even read some obscure ones, like uh, Martin Chuzzlewit. Wit. It's the most obscure one I think I've read, and I've read Great Expectations. is probably the best one, David Copperfield. So I've read some of the important ones. The Bleak House, I think, is an important one that I should have read by now. I should have gotten to it. So the top five classics you would like to read soon, I'm going to segue right in with Bleak House on that. I definitely want to read that soon. I want to read um, the. I want to read Anthony Trollope, the the seven book cycle 
uh, Barchester Towers. I'm not sure what the name of the whole cycle of books is called. I've wanted to read those for a while, and Kelly at, at Books I'm Not Reading recently finished it, and it reminds me that I really want to read those. So I guess that counts as seven books right there, but another one I'm going to read more soon than all of those that I wanted to read for a while is The Foresight Saga, those three novels, um, which I've seen some series of, and I just have a lot of issues with the people in the, in the books. I've talked about this before. I have a lot of issues with the family, the Foresight family, and I want to read the books before I really lay into them. Okay, we're getting there. Okay, so favorite? Did I skip one? So those, I think that's enough of uh, classics I would like to read soon. Oh, and also H. Ryder Haggard. She, I talked about that in my other video the other day with, with um, the Spring Into Adventure that uh, I'm hearing a lot about H. Ryder Haggard, and I feel like I should, I should have read those books. Favorite movie version, TV series based on a classic. I don't know if this is my very favorite, but it is one that I'm very fond of because I enjoyed it very much when I watched it, and it also had a, a secondary benefit, which was great. That is Jamaica in the series. It probably was in the early aughts. Um, I don't think there's that many uh, ad adaptions of Jamaica Inn. It's, it's a BBC or, you know, British television network of some type uh, series. Um, there was a movie, a Hitchcock movie in the 30s, which is terrible. It's one of Hitchcock's worst movies because the, the plot had to be heavily censored um, at that time. And, and it, even though it starts Charles Lawton and directed by Hitchcock, it's still a rotten movie. Uh, but the the series uh, was really good, and the reason I remember it so fondly is because because of that series, I started seeking out Daphne du Maurier's book. She's most famous as the the uh, author of Jamaica Inn, House on the. St I'm not going to say the name of that one. But that's not what she's most famous for, anyway. Uh, my Cousin Rachel, which is a fantastic book, and and the sort of the companion, I think of it as a companion novel. Her most famous book, Rebecca, Rebecca and My Cousin Rachel, seem like variations on a theme. And they're such good books. She's so freaking good, that Daphne du Maurier. And she wrote this short story uh, that the film, the, the Hitchcock film, The Birds, was was based on, and the story is just so good. I used to love The Birds, and then I read the story, and I thought, well, you know, I don't know. The story's so much better, and the movie's so great, and I love that story. And Don't Look Now is another one of her fantastic stories. Daphne du Maurier, I've still got a few things I could read by her, like, uh, like Frenchman's Creek I haven't read, and uh, she's truly, truly a great writer. And moving on, next, the favorite movie version TV based on a classic. Okay, worst classic to movie adaption. I don't know if this is the worst, worst, but 1939, David O. Selznick's production of Wuthering Heights with, you know, classic cast of Laurence Olivier and probably... You know, it's directed by William Wyler. Let's see who. Let's see who played. Was it Vivian Lee? No, Merle Oberon played Kathy. David Niven played uh, Edgar. Lawrence Olivier is. Uh, Lawrence Olivier is not my favorite actor. There, I said it. He's very much an embodiment of of the old way of acting. I think, and you know, I respect him as a artist and all that, but you know, when you watch a movie like The Betsy and you hear him doing his American accent, and you compare that to like the most average, you know, just regular work, work a day British actor today and how more, much more realistic they can be. And, and I know that, you know, of course, British actors now and even Scandinavian actors and Australians and others do these perfect, perfect American accents because they have so much 
access the content. You know, you can watch. They watch American movies all day. Lawrence Olivier probably didn't have that many resources, but it's just this. Um, anyway, forget about the Betsy. I just don't. He's just not sexy enough to be Heathcliff. Merle Oberon, who I really like in other things. Now, now that I've seen him at the time, I thought I just can't picture her as Kathy. You know, Kate Bush did a, 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 her most famous song about about this pair of lovers, and it's just this this really sort of balder. It's amazing how in 1939 you cannot make a, a faithful adaption of a a book from the 18 80s or 1860s, I can't remember when Wuthering Heights was, was, you know, it would just be too, it would just be too intense, you know, for Hollywood in the, in the, in the Hayes Code office to make the book well, so they just did it badly, and the most hilarious thing is, as anybody who's read Wuthering Heights, as I as imagine, <clears throat> Most of the people who are interested in classics, at least, who are watching this are familiar with, you know, the most thing you know is that they're out on the moors. That's the big thing. There's these, these two isolated families who are, who's, who's, uh, these two couples and their lives are so uh, intertwined with each other because there's really nobody else out there in this very, very small world that, like, where they're kind of their own madnesses and uh, reinforce each other, you know, but in the movie they have like big ball, big, they throw big balls at, at the, at the, at the hall and the moors, you know, and like hundreds of people come out to these balls and there's bar, you know, women in gowns and stuff just, you know, because that's what people wanted to see or that's what the studios thought, you know, had to be in that kind of movie. It's like a big Regency romance kind of movie and that's not the kind of story it is at all. So it's a really bad adaption. And uh, I saw it early enough uh, that I was capable of <clears throat> being upset about something so silly as, you know, I was so naive as to think that uh, a movie made under the Hollywood studio system in 1939 of a, of a serious, like, a deeply emotional, uh, intense, non-realistic um, sort of like subliminally sexual story would be would be anything else than that. The, you know, they're just we're they're just it's like a movie stamped like official classics version. It's like the classics comics version of Wuthering Heights, which probably I wonder if there is one. There might be. All right, a little more to go. So what I mean to say is if I were watching that movie now for the first time, I wouldn't expect it to be good, so I wouldn't be so hard on it probably. Worst classic movie adaption, and I'm sure there's others. Okay, favorite edition you'd like to collect more classics from? Barnes & Noble, Leather Editions, World Oxford Editions, The Penguin, Modern Classics. Okay, so um, I'm always, I've am always i always been a big pe Penguin guy. If I were collecting books right now, I would, I, would, I would buy more Penguins. I'm a Penguin snob, we used to call ourselves. Uh, so kind of, don't give me those world Oxford classics. The, the, the white, the, the stiff covers, and the and the and the white spines. Forget that. I want classic, penguin, classic, dark. Little penguin on it. Little little strip of red around it. it just that's that's a classic to me. It will always be penguins because that's how I started. Okay, uh, I'm gonna hang up now and. Uh, and nothing. I gotta figure out a way to end these videos. Thanks for everything. We're done.